Hello and welcome to the Printable Cuttable Creatables YouTube channel. My name is Lynn or LV Handcrafted here on YouTube and today what I thought I would do is film myself for the first time ever doing some screen printing. This is a really really fun technique to create your custom t-shirt designs where what you'll end up with is really something that is I think going to be a lot more durable and long lasting than heat transfer vinyl. What I've already done here is I've cut and um, using my Cricut a design that is going to serve as my stencil. This has been, if you've never made a stencil before, uh, what you'll want to do is just do reverse weeding, that is the portion of your actual design is what you want to weed out as opposed to weeding out the portions surrounding your design. So that's what I'm weeding through right now is the actual area of the design where I want to essentially um, print. And the reason why this is backwards or mirrored is because the stencil will get applied or adhered to my uh, screen printing frame on the underside. So because of that, this needs to be mirrored so that it actually will read correctly when it is printed. And you'll see what I mean when I actually um, attach this to my screen printing frame. I got a pretty inexpensive starter kit that I just found on Amazon and so to get started doing this you don't really need to invest a lot but I feel like this is something that I am going to want to do a lot more of because essentially what this ends up being is that with the special screen printing ink it will actually dye the fibers of the fabric so that what you end up with is not an extra layer of vinyl like you would get on uh, a heat transfer vinyl project, for example, but rather the t-shirt itself is getting dyed. So this creates a really durable, long-lasting t-shirt that basically will last as long as the t-shirt will last because the design, it might fade a little bit through washing, but it's not going to peel off like a vinyl might. You never know with vinyl, um, even the best vinyl, over time it might start to peel at the edges or flake off completely. And that's even with t-shirts that I've purchased, not even to say anything about DIY projects. So it's just something that happens. Now I've already pulled a um, bit of transfer tape and or transfer vinyl and what I've done is attach that to my vinyl and I'm trying to figure out how much how this is actually a fairly large design uh, given the size of my frame but I think I'll be able to make it work I am going to end up uh, end up trimming off a little portion of this but basically what you want to do once you have your um, piece of vinyl on your transfer tape is then you can pull off the paper liner from your vinyl and then I'm going to attach this to the bottom of my screen printing frame. So this is the side of the frame that is flat and will touch the surface of the t-shirt. And the reason to put it on this side as opposed to the inside of the frame is because on the inside of the frame, we're gonna use a squeegee. This is the inside here. We're gonna use a sque squeegee to kind of push the ink through this really fine mesh screen. It's a silk screen. And the vinyl, if you add that, if you were to add that to the inside, what might result is you're creating this extra layer of thickness of the vinyl. And so you might not be able to squeegee quite 
as well through this really, really fine mesh. So that's why I like to do, um, I like to attach this on the underside of the frame and anywhere that I don't want, I don't want any, um, uh, ink to transfer onto the t-shirt, I will mask off. Now with this particular design, it's rather large and it pretty well fin um, fills up my entire frame. But what I'm going to do, there are some slim, like little slivers that I can see peeking through, especially at the top and bottom edges. And I am going to mask those off with a bit of painter's tape. This process will take a little bit of time. It just depends on how intricate your design is. If you have a lot of really small, fine areas, you just want to make sure that it your vinyl stays stuck to the screen and not to your transfer tape as you're pulling it up. Now, it would probably have helped if I... Um, took some of the tips that I got while I was watching other YouTube creators. So if you are interested in this, you may want to just do a little quick search here on YouTube. There are lots and lots of video tutorials on how to do this from people who are way more experienced than I am. But one of the things that they advise is to kind of take some of the tackiness away from your transfer tape so that when it comes to this process, it's a lot easier to peel up. Now, I'm using the same paper liner that the transfer, um, that the vinyl came from, just so that if this uh, transfer film rolls back on itself, it doesn't reattach to the vinyl. So I'm just using that to kind of cover and protect the vinyl uh, across the areas that have already pe been peeled up. Don't throw this transfer um tape away though because you can use it multiple multiple times. I've actually since this first uh, printing have used it four additional times and it's still plenty tacky and in fact it's it's better now that I've used it a couple times and it's lost some of its tackiness. So if you want to um, make this process a little bit easier for yourself you could just before putting it onto your vinyl, maybe just stick it down onto your shirt, for example, that you're printing onto, that will pick up some lint. And not only will it kind of clean any lint and dust off of your shirt, but it will also make your transfer vinyl a little bit less sticky so that when you get to this point, it's a little bit easier to peel it off from the vinyl. Of course, you know, I didn't do that. And so now I am... Uh, having to take a lot of extra time to really make sure that everything uh, is well secured down and I'm just going slowly so that I don't stretch or distort any of the vinyl as I'm peeling it and I'm being careful to really make sure that any area that needs to be masked off stays firmly stuck down. So this is a really fun design. I've actually combined a couple of different SVG files from PCC. So I've got Love, this is from the um, Retro Love Is stacked. And what I did was I actually restacked just the word love because <laughs> that's the portion that I wanted. And I'm making this t-shirt for my sister-in-law who is a librarian. And so uh, she loves books. And so I thought I would add the word books to this design. And the word books is from the... Um, I like big books as VG, which is really cute. And so that's a um, really fun thing with SVGs is that because they're all on individual layers, you can kind of pick and choose the different elements that you want and combine them. And that way you can create something totally unique, totally custom to whoever uh, or for whoever you're making your project. So I've got my screen finally set up and I did want to make sure that I burnished really well from the inside and from the outside. I've got my t-shirt blank here and what you want to do with your t-shirt blank, 
I didn't think to do this, but I'm going to recommend that you maybe iron um, or if you have a heat press to just do a light heat pressing on your shirt just to get all of the wrinkles out. And as well, you might have saw a moment ago, I've got this brown, it's actually just packaging um, paper when you order stuff, say from Amazon, for example, and they just crumble in some of this packing paper to just help cushion everything out. I don't recommend you use that. Use something flat. Use maybe a 12 by 12 uh, sheet of cardstock. Use a bit of parchment paper. Use some butcher paper. Use whatever you have that does not have a texture to it. So I would not recommend something like a corrugated cardboard because that's going to have that corrugated pattern or texture to it. And then when you push down the ink through this screen, it's actually going to pick up some of that texture. Now, the end result for this particular t-shirt looked okay. I was actually kind of okay with that uh, crumpled paper look. So just be aware if that's the look you're going for, then certainly um, use it. But if that's not the look you want, if you want a nice solid print, then use something nice and flat. I am going to attempt to mix some paint and I thought I would get a little bit scientific about this just in case, just in case I needed to mix up more paint um, to use that needed to be the same color. So I've got my scale here and what I was going to do, although you'll probably notice I just abandon the whole idea of this, um, being really precise about this. But if you want to be precise, you can mix your paints so that they are uh, according to a specific ratio. So for example, I'm going for a purple here. If you wanted to mix your reds and your blues, at a particular ratio, one to the other, then you could do what I'm doing, which is to weigh them, especially since I've got the paint in these tubes. I'm using um, Marabou Fabric Screen Printing Ink. This is ink, it's not paint. So just to be clear, this is an ink and it's basically kind of like a dye ink. It will dye your, um, the fibers of your t-shirt and it just happens to be nice and thick and kind of uh, viscous so that it can um, really have a little bit of body to it so that you can really push it through the stencil but it's not super liquidy to where it's going to leak under the stencil so that's why it, it looks like it's paint consistency but this is an ink it's a uh, dye based um, ink that is also water based so this is going to clean up really really well other screen printing inks include um, something called plastisol and that is a type of plastic so you can't necessarily uh, just rinse it off and rinse it down your sink like you would be able to with this ink so that's um, something to bear in mind. There's lots of different screen printing inks that you can try. And what I'm gonna do is just run a line of the ink across the top of my design. And if you can get it above your design, that would be probably uh, more ideal than what I've got going on here. But my design is so large, it, barely, it pretty much takes up the entire frame. And so I'm just putting it where I can. And I've got a squeegee off to the side here. And what I'll do is just from the top, squeegee downward at a bit of an angle, but not without pressure, not with pressure. Basically what I'm aiming to do with the first pass is to do what's called flooding. And that is to just get paint across the surface of the entire design. And you can be generous with your paint as I was here. Uh, I've got a, quite a bit of excess, but in my subsequent um, passes, what I'm aiming to do is actually with a medium 
pressure. You don't have to push with all of your strength, but definitely um, push at an angle with light to medium pressure so that you can kind of get that ink to go through the stencil and make good contact with your t-shirt. It's really hard to tell when to stop, <laughs> but you can do, um, if I've seen other uh, folks on YouTube do this where in two, maybe three swipes, they're good to go. Part of the challenge that I was getting was that because my squeegee doesn't run the entire width of my design, every time I uh, made a pass, the, it would create this line of paint on the edge of the squeegee. So part of what I was trying to do in subsequent passes was to remove like excess uh, buildup. But once it looked like it was good, I lifted it up very carefully, trying to hold down my t-shirt as well. You can see at the top of the E, I actually uh, accidentally masked off a little bit, so that didn't actually print all the way through. I think I had a little bit of masking tape there. But if that happens to you, don't worry, you can uh, take a little paintbrush and fill that in. Then, leaving the shirt to dry on its own naturally, I actually let it go overnight. Then I'm over here at my heat press. This is uh, 320 degrees and I'm just going to press this for uh, 30 seconds or so. And then once my timer goes off, that will heat set the design so that it becomes permanent and you're less likely to see as much fading when you put this through the wash. But there are instructions to say uh, that you should wash this with the shirt inside out. But what's great about screen printing is that it's, it's really soft to the touch because basically it's not an additional layer of anything. It's just the shirt that has been dyed. And so this is going to hold up over time. It's going to keep the softness of the t-shirt. And if you do make to sell, you can do a lot of these shirts one after another. So really, really fabulous and fast too. If you are making multiples for family reunions or to sell or um, just because. So I hope that you enjoyed this video today. And until next time, happy crafting and have a fabulous day. Thanks. Bye.